Good morning, students. It's another beautiful day to learn about rhetorical analysis. Today we're going to practice with the Marianne Shad Carey prompt, which is one of my favorite prompts. Shad Carey was a pretty exemplary journalist, and if you want to learn more about her, I'll attach some additional reading at the end of this video. So in this video, before we read and annotate the prompt and write the essay, we're going to look at how to set up for the new 2020 AP Lang exam format. I recommend that if you're working on a computer, you set up with two windows open on your desktop so that you can have the reading passage on one side and your writing on the other side. And as you toggle back and forth, you could make the reading bigger while you're reading that and the writing bigger while you're writing. But this way you've got them both in front of you so you can look at them. If you decide you prefer to do this on a phone or a tablet or you have to do it on a phone or a tablet, Keep in mind that you can pull the prompt up on that phone or tablet and then handwrite it and then upload photos at the end to submit your exam. You also can print from this page, but I will be really cautious about doing that because you may lose some time trying to get your prompt to print. If you have more questions about this, you can see our exam frequently asked questions shared on Google Classroom. So let's get started with reading and annotating. Notice that I set this up with two windows so I can see my prompt in one window and write my response in the other. As I start annotating, this time before I even read the actual passage after I've read the prompt, I'm going to take notes on the argument that I'm going to make in the thesis based on that prompt. This way I know that I'm going to be able to get this argument thesis point in my rubric. Here's where I'm glad that we actually get to plan this and write it on a computer because as I'm reading, I'm going to go through and paraphrase, but I'm also going to take quotes directly and put them in quotation marks. And this way I've already got ideas typed out and specific quotes typed out that I can use in my paper. So as I'm going through, I am kind of organizing here. You can see me sorting this into two different spaces that are going to become my two different body paragraphs. And I'm also drafting general ideas for my subthesis statements so that there's a firm argument for each of these body paragraphs. Now that I have a good idea of what structure I want to use, I'm going to go through and actually plan out which rhetorical devices Remember, I need to pick at least two, and that is part of getting the thesis and making sure that I've got enough points for evidence and commentary as well. So I'm going to look at what I wrote and then add those rhetorical devices to my thesis, which is still a work in progress. And I'm still going to update that thesis and make it smoother and better, but I've got it in there, and therefore I know I at least have one point. So hey, that's something. And now I'm going to actually write the paper. And the beauty of planning and writing on the computer here is that I can go back in directly to my planning and do my writing right in there so I'm not repeating myself. Now let's take a moment to pause and look back at our rubric, this time specifically focusing on evidence and commentary. Because I know that evidence and commentary is the biggest score of my rubric, I'm going to make sure at this point that I've used at least two rhetorical strategies and that I've clearly and consistently explained my argument throughout my essay. And now that I've checked my evidence and commentary carefully to make sure that I've made a solid argument, I can go back and add more to my introduction paragraph and add a conclusion paragraph. And if I do both of those things well, then I know that I've got more than one instance of successful style so that I can earn that style point. Fancy. Now I'll leave up the different paragraphs of the essay for a moment so that you could pause here and take a look at what the essay looks like written all the way out. And pause here, you can look at the second body paragraph. And pause here if you want to take a moment to look at the conclusion. As always, if you have more questions, you can schedule a writing conference with me later on. I suggest you also take a few moments and look up Marianne Shad Carey's obituary in the New York Times overlooked obituary section. She was pretty awesome. Thanks for watching and good luck on that exam.